Hi all, I think it's a good time to examine the dragon pawn structure in more depth, considering we've just gone over an instructor game by Natalia Pogonina. So um, in the dragon structure, especially when white castles queenside, what are the themes for white and black? In fact, they're usually a pawn on f3 if the dragon, um, the Yugoslav variation was played. This not only supports the e4 pawn, but it means, um, well, if it was on f4, it would be blocking the bishop, which is usually on e3. And often white's plan is to exchange off black's dark squared bishop so that these holes are more exploitable. So Andrew Soltis basically says things for white, outpost on d5, yes, because that is a semi open file. So you'd expect a nice outpost for white on d5 in some variations. A kingside attack with either f4, f5, or with h2, h4, h5. Sorry, h2 to h4 to h5. So this pawn coming here, or this pawn coming here. So you can bite at this part of the pawn, ch pawn chain, basically, this g6 pawn. Um, an exchange here will rip open, basically, the semi open h files we saw in the Talia game, which means that rooks can then double on this file to exert great pressure on h7. And you'll notice, if we exchange off this pawn for this pawn, so let's give an example there. Um, let's throw in at some moves for black. So basically, we see that the structure has been weakened a little bit, so that g6 is often a bit weaker. And we, as we saw in that excellent demonstration, in fact, if there's just one pawn left there and white gets in e5 as a pawn sack, then if there's a queen on d3, then this pawn is going to be um, very vulnerable. So a lot of things obviously happen when there's pieces on the board. We're just looking at the soul of the pawn structure in general and general themes here. So generally, white wants to rip open the h-file or play later f4, f5. In the previous game, actually, we saw both plans in action. And a consideration for black is queenside counterplay with b5 and often bringing the queen out to a5 and often doubling the rooks against the poor knight, which is on c3, facing you know this semi-open c-file pressure. And the way which we saw that uh, you know neutralized a bit in the previous game was white playing later f4, f5 with a rook on h3 defending you know laterally like that. So um, the game we saw is bringing alive some of the themes you know of this pawn structure. But uh, as you know generalizations go, themes for black pressure on the long diagonal. So that's why it's another good reason to try and get rid of this dark squared bishop. Queenside counterplay which is why it's good to have some defensive resources on c3 sometimes. Exploiting white's often overextended kingside pawns in the end game. So if, if these pawns are sort of left, say, on g5, you know, if there's a pawn on g5, that can later be picked up in the end game if black's king you know, didn't get it completely, and black can often win the end games. Also, I think you, know, you could say that black has more central pawns, so being able to create maybe a passed d pawn in the ending, or march the king on the dark squares potentially, so white has to be careful on, on the dark squares. And you know, this structure is very good for an early you know, assault on the black king in the middle game quite often. Um, so themes for white again. Outpost on d5, kingside attack. Um, the weakness of black's queenside minority pawns in the endgame. So maybe you know, this small pawn island can be a bit weaker in the endgame. Maybe you and white can try and get a pass pawn out of that or try and get the king in later to attack these pawns on you know maybe infiltrating on the dark squares so these are very broad abstract generalizations so you, you might think well are they so sort of broad and abstract they're not you know even worth mentioning well i think you know a lot of you know the plans of, of dragon games are dictated you know fundamentally by the pawn structure and of course you have to look at the dynamics of the position, how, how the pieces are interacting here. But structurally, this is a very exciting pawn structure, I think, when, when both sides castle on opposite sides. Um, what else to say about it? You know, basically, you know, the semi-open foal here, I'm not personally convinced about the knight on d5 as a, as a major thing. We didn't see that in the previous game. Um, but it can, you know, if it provokes a weakness, then this, this pawn will be a little bit weaker. I am convinced more by, you know, the h4, h5 plan that's being, you know, very often played. And black often, you know, sacrificing the exchange on c3. That's an, a very, 
you know, often played positional sacrifice. And the same for White actually sacrificing, you know, Rook for Knight on H5, just to break down the barriers, you know, the defensive barriers of the respective kings. Um, please leave any comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.